Welcome to the first episode of Cloud Cafe, a series about cloud app development at Atlassian. My name's Melissa Paisley, and I'm a member of the developer experience team at Atlassian in Sydney. Why don't you grab a cuppa and join me for a short introduction? Atlassian builds powerful collaboration tools that are used by thousands of teams and millions of users around the world. And the Atlassian platform APIs let you create apps to tailor these tools to be the perfect fit. In this video, you'll learn about some of the more popular Atlassian products and the available deployment options. Then we'll go deeper, introducing you to the Atlassian platforms for building apps. By the end, you'll have a better idea of the kind of app you want to build and the framework you want to use. Before I talk about building apps, let's take a look at some of the more widely used and commonly extended Atlassian products. Let's start with Jira. Originally, Jira was designed as a bug and issue tracker, but today Jira is used to help teams of all kinds manage their work. Jira issues are used to track the status of tasks as they move through a workflow. Workflows are used to define a process. They can be as simple or as complicated as required. A basic workflow might simply have an open, in progress and complete status, whereas a software development or marketing workflow could be much more complex. Team leads or managers can use Jira dashboards and reports to quickly get an overview of how a team is managing their workload, see an individual team member's progress, or get an overview of how a project is progressing. Atlassian offers Jira in a number of different packages to suit different needs. All versions include the basic Jira framework. However, Jira software and Jira service desk include extra features and functionality. To learn more about Jira Core, Jira Software, or Jira Service Desk, start by checking out the product demo videos. All right, now let's move on to Confluence. Confluence is a virtual workspace. It's used by organizations and teams as a place to share knowledge and collaborate on tasks. Some common applications for Confluence include documentation and knowledge bases, project collaboration and planning, and company intranets. Work is done in pages, which can be organized into spaces. Spaces can be further used to organize pages into hierarchies, grouping work in whatever way logically suits the organization or team. Confluence provides countless templates for pages to suit all kinds of needs. Pages can be customized with text and macros. Confluence page macros offer users the ability to customize their page with a range of different content, as well as tools and integrations with other products and services. For example, a user may add a Jira roadmap to their project planning page or embed a YouTube video in their knowledge base article. Macros also allow for interaction with other users. For example, adding a sign up page for an event or a poll to vote for what restaurant to go to on the next team outing. To learn more about Confluence, take a look at the product demo, which I'll share the link to later. Okay, now let's talk about Bitbucket. Bitbucket is a Git-based code hosting and collaboration tool. Bitbucket adds to the existing functionality of Git code management, giving teams tools to work together to collaborate, test, and deploy. Bitbucket apps make it possible to further customize Bitbucket to your team's needs. For example, the Bitbucket Slack app allows your team to get updates about your Bitbucket repository and perform actions directly from Slack. To learn more about Bitbucket or Git, go to bitbucket.org. And last but not least, let's talk about Trello. Trello is a visual way for teams to collaborate on any project. It's also a quick way for individuals to track their tasks. It's more lightweight than something like Jira or Confluence, making it quicker to get up and running. In Trello, cards represent tasks. These tasks are arranged onto boards, in lists, which are represented as columns. Lists can be used to represent anything you like. They may be used to organize and group task types or the different statuses a task might be in. Cards can be given due dates to help with managing deadlines. You can add Trello power-ups to your boards to extend what Trello does, customizing it to meet your particular needs. To learn more about Trello, why not create a board and try it out? Now that I've talked to you about some of the Atlassian collaboration tools, 
let's take a look at the different deployment types. Today, there are three main deployment options available for Atlassian customers to run their products, Atlassian Server, Data Center, and Cloud. Both Atlassian Server and Atlassian Data Center are self-hosted products. Customers install, host, and run the products themselves, as well as managing the database they want to use and managing their user accounts. Server and Data Center customers are also responsible for product upgrades and updates. Product licenses do not expire. However, customers need to subscribe to receive the latest updates and support. This means that Atlassian server and data center apps need to work on a range of different possible product versions and database configurations. In data center, a customer might have their application set up in a clustered environment, with the application running on multiple nodes that connect to a shared database and file system. This means data center apps have the added complexity of needing to support a clustered environment as well as additional features like zero downtime upgrades. Server and data center apps are installed directly into the Atlassian product to add or change its functionality. They're run in a container but can affect the performance of the product they are deployed to. So app developers need to test how their app will affect the performance of the product, especially on large sets of data. Atlassian cloud products are hosted by Atlassian with user management, databases, and product updates all managed by Atlassian automatically. Cloud products are licensed through a subscription model with a monthly or annual fee based on the number of users. And for small teams, there's a free edition available. Atlassian cloud architecture is multi-tenant. That means a single instance of software and its supporting infrastructure supports multiple customer instances. Instances are identifiable by a unique tenant ID. Atlassian Cloud products provide an interface called Atlassian Connect, which provides a platform for third-party apps to integrate with a particular instance of an application. Because cloud products are automatically updated, cloud apps only need to work on the most recent version of the product, and data is stored in a consistent format as well. Because apps are not installed directly into the product, it's much more difficult for apps to impact the performance of their host application. When building an Atlassian app, you'll need to consider what platform you want to build for, as the APIs are quite different. As the name of this series suggests, our focus is on building cloud apps. In 2019, there were over 10 million monthly active cloud users, and we're seeing that number continue to grow, making Atlassian Cloud more popular than ever before. So let's look at the different cloud APIs available. First up, let's look at Atlassian Connect. In 2014, Atlassian announced the Atlassian Connect platform for building cloud apps. Over time, this platform has been extended and refined into the mature platform available today. A Connect app is a web application that customizes Atlassian products through HTTP requests made to the Connect platform. For an app to be a Connect app, it needs to specify a manifest, known as an app descriptor, which defines how it will interact with the cloud instance. Connect apps are independent web applications, providing their developers with flexibility. Connect apps can be made using whatever tools their creators might want to use to build them, as long as the app can make and receive HTTP requests to connect to the Atlassian Cloud products. Connect apps use modules to extend the host product, and a JavaScript client library is provided to share objects and methods. API calls are used to interact with the host product, and triggers can be invoked in response to events using webhooks. When the app descriptor is installed on a cloud instance, it uses the information provided to send the app the tenant information and a shared secret. The app stores this information for later, uh, using it to sign and validate requests. The Connect framework itself handles discovery, installation, authentication, and integration in the UI. It's also possible to store data within the customer's instance in the form of key value pairs associated with objects, such as Confluence pages or JIRA issues. In late 2019, Atlassian announced a new cloud platform called Forge. Forge aims to reduce the barriers to entry for cloud apps by removing the need for you to manage the details of your app, allowing you to focus on building powerful customizations.
The Forge platform is serverless, taking advantage of AWS Lambda to provide a functions-as-a-service model to app developers. The platform also takes care of business logic around HTTP services, authentication, and so forth, so you don't have to worry about things like token storage, OAuth flows, etc. Triggers allow Forge apps to respond to events, invoking as many Lambda functions as required, handling scaling for you as well. Finally, like Connect, the Forge platform allows you to store data, removing the need for you to manage a database. And now, let's take a look at Trello power-ups. You might know that Trello is a much more recent addition to the Atlassian suite of collaboration tools, and with that in mind, it may not surprise you that it has its own customization platform. Power-ups are the best way to build on top of Trello, and they allow you to customize the Trello experience by adding buttons to cards and boards, adding extra functionality such as preview images, or even automate workflow functions. Power-ups require that you host some code to provide HTML and JavaScript that Trello renders within an iframe. There are also REST APIs and a JavaScript client library to make it easier to interact with the APIs. Similar to Connect and Forge, the Trello platform provides an option to store and retrieve key value pair data, which can be associated with objects like cards, boards, and even organizations. So how do you choose which cloud platform API is best for you? If you want to build for Trello, you'll need to build on their PowerUps platform. If you're considering building a Confluence or Jira app, Atlassian Connect and Forge will both continue to be offered as platforms to build Atlassian cloud apps on. So when choosing the platform for your app, it's best to consider which will suit your needs and preferences. If you want the flexibility of being able to build your app using whatever tools you want, then Connect is a great mature platform to use. However, if you're not too concerned about what tools you're using and don't want to worry about hosting your app, then Forge could be the perfect fit for you. Now, we've really just touched on our products, platforms, and frameworks in this video, so I'm sure that you have lots of questions and I bet that you're eager to learn more. I've compiled a list of resources that I think that you'll find useful. Atlassian Developer. The Atlassian Developer site, available at developer.atlassian.com, is the home to all the Atlassian app development documentation. It's where you'll find API reference docs, tutorials, and getting started guides for all the Atlassian development frameworks. The Atlassian Developer blog at developer.atlassian.com slash blog is the home of ecosystem announcements. Check it regularly for updates and news, or subscribe to the developer newsletter for updates direct to your inbox. The developer community forums can be found at community.developer.atlassian.com. They're a great place to chat with other Atlassian app developers. Introduce yourself to our developer community, ask for advice from other Atlassian app developers, or search existing responses. Jira.atlassian.com is home to the Atlassian Public Issue Tracker. You can search for workarounds to bugs, watch tickets for updates, and vote on feature requests. Feature requests are also a great source of inspiration for new apps. Ecosystem.atlassian.net is the Atlassian Ecosystem Team's Issue Tracker. Here you'll find bug and feature requests for our developer tools. You can also raise a request here with the Marketplace support team. Finally, go.atlassian.com slash cloud-dev is the place to sign up for a free development instance of Atlassian Cloud, so you can install and test your app in a real cloud instance. I've briefly covered many useful resources in this video. You can find links to the resources I've mentioned in the description below. Now you know the basics about Jira, Confluence, Bitbucket, and Trello. You've learned a little about the cloud platform and the options for building Connect and Forge apps and Trello power-ups. This will give you a better understanding of the kind of app you want to build. But what next? Sign up for your free developer cloud instance, get your development environment set up, and try building your first Hello World app using Connect, Forge, or power-ups. See you next time.